In accordance with our laws, only the firstborn may compete for the hand of the fair maiden. Aye. Archers, to your mark! Aye, archers, to, to your mark! And may the lucky arrow find its target. What's up, everyone? Today we are going to analyze the archery scene from the movie Brave. Get on with it! Brave is a 2012 animated movie from Disney and Pixar. The story centers on a young Scottish princess during medieval times as she and her mother struggle through the issues like coming of age, cultural marriage traditions, women's roles and leadership, and ultimately what bravery really means. Early on, there's a fantastic scene where the four clans have gathered together to compete for the hand of the princess in a contest of archery. This is a nod to an earlier Disney movie that features a similar thing, although with much less archery technique. What makes Brave so special is the attention to detail when it comes to archery and common mistakes that archers can make. Much of this was brought to my attention through a Wired article in 2012 written by Jim McQuarrie. You should go check that out. The first young man is a gentle giant. He displays timid behavior in contrast to his overbearing and strong father. As an archer, we see this play out as he uses the chicken wing technique. Instead of getting a bow that fits him properly, he uses a draw that is too short for his large frame. Strong people are often able to use this technique with all the tension held between their forearms through their fingers. His back is hunched and his back muscles are completely unused. His accuracy is so far off because he leans his head down to try and align the arrow with the target. He's lucky he didn't shoot way over or plant it straight in the dirt. The second young man is a hyper-masculine. He projects strength and vigor in a classic ladies' man attitude. He even looks back at the crowd with a full draw to showboat his awesomeness. We get it, bro. You lift. Also... He's left-handed, and while that doesn't affect anything, it's just an interesting detail. When he draws, he does at least three things wrong. First, he overdraws the bowstring right before firing. He's not patiently aiming and waiting to release. Second, he does not anchor the string on his cheek, which means his arrow release point will be different each time. Third, he's a plucker. When he does shoot, his hand comes out and away from the string to the side instead of straight back. Each of these causes the arrow to slide off target, and specifically because he's a left-handed plucker, that makes the arrow go to the right of the bullseye. The last archer is the goofy kid who doesn't even really know what's going on. He is the only son from his family, and he is definitely cut from a different cloth. While you can't see his grip and his draw very well, his airheaded attitude and lack of physical strength cause him to overcompensate by gripping the arrow and the string extra tight. This is called pinching, and this type of grip causes the arrow to twist off the arrow rest and onto his arm. When the king finally yells at him, he is shocked, which causes him to tighten his core muscles and loosen his grip. And like the previous archer, his right-handed release uh, is a plucking motion, which would normally cause his shot to go left. But because he was startled when the king yelled, he accidentally overcompensated for his poor form, and the arrow hits dead center. Like the character itself, that shot is just dumb and lucky. Then Merida steps in, and you know that she has proper form right off the bat because she has to rip her dress in order to have full freedom of movement in her back and shoulder muscles. Notice how she anchors the arrow each time on her cheek, and when she shoots the arrow, her hand stays anchored there. This consistency has been developed over time with lots and lots of practice. Even though she is moving, she holds her upper body steady for those first two shots. She doesn't even fully tighten her hand on the grip until she is about to shoot. The third shot is the most interesting. We see her fingers hold the tension of the bow without grabbing or gripping it tightly. She draws the bow with an open hand on the grip, then tightens it down to steady her aim. She pulls the target towards herself, which is a visual mental technique used to concentrate and aim. 
She doesn't hold in her breath, but lets it out and holds her relaxed body, except using the muscles to draw and aim. Her feet are set, her aim is true, and when she releases, we get to see something really cool, the archer's paradox. This is what actually happens when a person shoots a bow. The bowstring, when released, accelerates the arrow forward. However, the arrow is flexible, which means the back of the arrow moves at a faster speed than the arrow tip as the mid shaft bends. Now that it's released, the shaft will bend back and forth, oscillating, bending around the riser of the bow. The arrow would naturally keep bending back and forth like that, if not for the fletches, those feathery looking things at the back of the arrow. These fletches produce a spinning effect on the arrow, much like the rifling does on a gun barrel. The oscillation of the shaft and the spinning of the fletching combines to make the arrow fly fast and straight. This is the archer's paradox. We then get to see something that every archer actually kind of hates, a Robin Hood. That's the name for an arrow splitting another arrow already in the target. And the reason that we archers hate it is because it ruins not one, but two arrows when that happens. That's like 20 bucks. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about archery today. Mm -hmm.